Welcome to Student Voices for Education. In the next 30 minutes, you will learn about SAC, about TUSD, and meet Superintendent H.T. Sanchez. At the end of the show, you will hear what students see as the future of education in the year 2059. SAC stands for the Superintendent Student Advisory Council and is comprised of representatives from each of TUSD's 10 high schools. Our job is to be the voice of TUSD students that commutes communicates directly with the superintendent. I'd like to introduce my co-host, Sarah Ridings. She'll introduce each school representative and we'll take a few minutes to find out what make, about what makes each TUSD High School unique. Hello and thanks for watching. First up, we have Sabino. Will you please come up? Hi, what's your name? My name is Michelle Howard. Okay, so what do you think people need to know about your school? I think the most important thing to know is that our school is really based on commitment and passion. Um, from our clubs to our sports to our academics and teachers and faculty, it's evident everywhere, especially in our student council I noticed this year when they hosted state convention. That was quite remarkable. So tell me more about your state convention. Well, basically, about 2,000 students that participate in student council from all around Arizona came to Sabino High School for three days. And the fact that our class of about 40 was able to take care of them and make sure they had a really great time is just outstanding. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have Saguaro High School. Hello, I'm Matt Vestage from Saguaro High School. Hi, Matt. So can you please tell me what makes your school special? Saguaro has a unique social climate where there are people who have gone to school together from elementary school all the way to high school, but our enrollment rates, our open enrollment rates have increased over the past years, so there's lots of different students that are coming into the system. But the, the best part about Saguaro is all of the ways that you can expand your horizons outside of the classroom through CTE classes, different electives, and caring teachers. Can you tell me about one specific activity in particular? Um, I personally am involved with the drama class, and we're an award-winning um, drama like program, so I spend lots of time building sets and communicating and learning life skills. That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, we have Santa Rita. Hi, what's your name? Jordan Jones. Can you tell me something about your school that makes it unique? It's the fact that um, people underestimate uh, our school and they would, when you would hear someone saying uh, you would, they won an award, you would see, and you'd be really surprised and uh, you'll be really amazed of how our school tries to work hard with, uh, for their rewards. Can you tell me about like your classroom, like what's a day-to-day -day, um, school day at your school? Um, well, you see teachers trying to encourage students, um, try to get at least a C, B's, A's, and you'll see students who currently are still giving um, exceeded students um, more information and challenging those students. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have Palo Verde. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Ron Tarumel. Pleased to meet you. Um, can you tell me something about your school that makes it unique? Uh, well, uh, we went through the turnaround process where uh, we were a failing school about three years ago, and uh, now we're a B school. And actually, last month, uh, the A plus committee came to our school and checked out our school, and they said it's like an 80 page whatever uh, application. It takes a long time, so I feel like that's a big accomplishment. Can you tell me um, about what specific changes you have seen? Um, so like in student council this year, we had a neighborhood parade and we had uh, the prom queens and the prom king, uh, princess, prince, uh, they would walk with us and we had the band playing and that was really cool. So um, yeah, I guess the tailgate with it, that was really nice, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Next we have University High School. Hi, I'm Siana from University High School. Um, can you tell me about some of your school's special achievements? So UHS has incredible people. That's what really makes the school. The students are so individualized and so supportive. And whenever we have huge, massive, like school-wide uh, efforts, everyone pitches in from the freshmen to the seniors. And I think that's what makes it really great. 
Can you tell me about some of your school's extracurricular activities? Well, um, we have thousands of clubs, including Mock Trial, which made it really far this year. They're, I'm not. Going to nationals. Going to nationals. <laughs> <laughs> and our mathletes, I think, um, got first and second in the state. And we have some phenomenal swim teams, clubs, sports, and everyone just supports each other so much. Like, you'll see them in the hall and be like, nice job. You're awesome. I know you. <laughs> That's what makes it special. Thank you so much. Next, we have Rincon High School. Hello, what's your name? Um, my name is Ashley Owens, and I'm from Rincon. Um, what do you think people need to know about your school? One thing people should really know is that Rincon is a very diverse school. We have clubs that meet all needs. GSA, which is Gay Straight Alliance, JSA, Student Council, Anime Club, all the way to Archery Club. And it really allows for the student voice to be heard amongst the student body. Can you tell me about your school community? Um, we have a very positive school community. Like I said, it's diverse. Students really support each other, and it's just awesome all around. Thank you. Next, we have Catalina. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Camila from Catalina. Can you please tell me something about your school that makes it special? Um, definitely the diversity. There are over 40 different languages spoken on campus, and also 40 different uh, countries and nations represented, like um, Serbia, Cuba, and Bosnia. Next, we have Project Moore. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Yasmin. Can you tell me something about your school that makes it unique? Um, something that makes our school unique is our small class sizes and how every teacher and administrator knows your name and pushes you to do your absolute best. Do you like the fact that everyone knows your name and that you have a small community? Yeah, yes, definitely. It like motivates me to do better and like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You. Next we have Tucson High. Hi, I'm Yomira from Tucson High. Um, can you tell me something about your school that makes it one of a kind? Our school is the oldest operating school in Arizona, and we're the largest school as well. And even though we're the largest school, we can find a way for every student to fit in and be able to, to participate in our school. Can you tell me about some of your school's extracurricular sports or anything like that? Um, I'm personally a fine arts magnet, and I love the fine arts program. We have a great dance group. The piano class is amazing. Our mariachi group is as well. Our orchestra, our band, and our teacher, Mr. Art Umquist, he got the People's Award for the best teacher. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Choya High School. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Lorena from Choya. Can you tell me something that people need to know about your school? Definitely. Two things that people should know about Choya is our amazing Arabic program that has been rated top 10 in the nation. And this allowed some of our students to visit Qatar and to further educate themselves with the culture as well as the language. Another thing that people should know is our amazing IB program, which allows students to get a more worldwide international mindset to help them prepare, meet new people, and um, help experience them and um, to connect themselves with the different people from around the world. Can you tell me about your school's community? Yes, definitely. Our school has a really, really strong set of community when it comes to teachers and parents and students and friends. Everybody just gets together to show, always show Choi a pride to its fullest, to pep rallies, and games, and dances. It's amazing. That's awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. And last but not least, we have Pueblo High School. Hi, what's your name? I'm Jaron Gunnels from Pueblo. Um, can you tell me something about your school that makes it special? Um, what makes Pueblo special is that we have a very large community. Uh, everybody knows each other. When people that don't go to Pueblo, they, when they hear our name, a lot of people think about gang violence and stuff like that. but when you visit, you realize that it's really not like that at all. Yeah, so can you tell me about that sense of community at your school? Um, I could walk down the halls just about every day and name you every person that I see because everybody knows each other and everybody gets along. That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I would like to thank all the schools for sharing interesting information. Now back to you, Madison. Thank you so much. Now we are going to introduce and welcome Dr. H.T. Sanchez. 
Um, I'm going to hand it over to my co-host, Karina Cecil Moran, and she's going to be asking Dr. Sanchez a few questions about TUSD and SAC. Hello, Dr. Sanchez. Thank Hello. you for being here today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. In what ways is SAC important to you? You know, SAC is extremely important to me because this is my opportunity to hear from our students across TUSD, from our high school students about the things they're thinking about, their big ideas, their big dreams, and then just the general things that in TUSD we can do better to better serve them. How do, these, how do the SAC students contribute to your vision? You know, the way I think about it is the SAC students are the vision for TUSD. I mean, they go out and they talk to their friends and their peers on their campuses and they ask what's on their mind. They also are the ones that are sitting in the classrooms and really learning and seeing what we do well and certain things that we can do better. And so as they come in and they share their ideas with me, they help form what my vision should be. Really, my job is one of service. How do I better serve the students? How do I better serve their vision, their aspirations, and their dreams? What would you like the SAC students to understand? I think most importantly, their role is ambassadors. They're on their campus. They get to hear what's going on. They get to see what's going on. They get to see the things that they really like and say, you know what, this might be something I should share with the rest of the SAC group and let them know this is what we're doing and perhaps they want to do it on the other campuses in the district. And so I think the big message is, for our SAC students to realize their role as an ambassador, as somebody who's listening and looking and bringing those ideas forward and helping shape and transform the district. What would you like them to believe in? I think most importantly, to believe in their role as leaders within the schools. I think it's just crucial that they realize that without them and without their voice, what a lot of times I hear uh, doesn't come from the students. And so without their voice, um, there's uh, a lot less meaningfulness to the work that I do. So I want them to believe and know how important they truly are to the work that we do. What are your initiatives for TUSD right now? I'd have to say the biggest initiative moving into next year is dropping class size to one to 27, one teacher to 27 students. That's just critically important. And what we had to do at central office is we had to, what I call scrub, $5 million out of central office budgets to send to the schools to be able to drop the class size and hire more teachers for next year. So what students should see next year are smaller classes and more interaction with their teachers and with each other. The second thing I'd have to say is we're opening our infant and early child care centers next year for all of our TUSD team members and for the general public and partners which will allow people for about a quarter of the price of what you find out in the market to get a great education from, uh, for kids who are six weeks old all the way to five years old. And it's just very exciting. Well, is there any particular moment or event in the past year that was wonderful? I'd have to say the most amazing event that we had this year was the strategic planning event. We had over 200 people. We had business people. We had higher educators. We had classroom teachers and principals. We had parents. And we had all these people just creatively thinking, what do we need to do to make TUSD the destination district in the United States? Did that meeting help you find more ideas to make TUSD better? That meeting just did so much to inform me and to give me ideas on what we need to do next. As a matter of fact, this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock at the Duffy Professional Development Center close to Rincon High School, we're getting um, our subcommittees together to begin talking about diversity, communication, curriculum and instruction, our facilities and finance, and what we're going to do over the next five years. So that was just the beginning. The work continues, and it actually continues this next Saturday at 9 o'clock. That's good. Is there a moment in the past year that was particularly difficult for you? I'd have to say the most difficult moment to point was coming in as a new superintendent and listening to everybody's thoughts, ideas, aspirations, as well as their frustrations and trying to figure out when you're the oldest school district in the state, there's a whole lot of things you've done well, but then there are some things that we need to do better and to hear from everybody and try to gather everybody's perspective together. and find a way to not be overwhelmed by these ideas and not overwhelmed by these concerns, but a way to navigate through them. That's been challenging, but we have great people, we have great students, and that makes the work a little easier and so much more meaningful. What is your vision for TUSD and Tucson? I'd have to say the vision for TUSD is to be not just a district in Arizona, but the district in Arizona, and not just a district in the United States, but the destination district. I mean, you heard from the students that just came before. We have Arabic going on. We have diverse. We have this great community. We really reach out and honor and respect everybody's dignity. I mean, 
what a great place, what a beginning, and this is just the beginning. So I want us to be a place that people say we have to go and see what they're doing because it's amazing and they have amazing students. And your vision for Tucson? I'd have to say for Tucson, if anybody wants to know um, how can we solve some of our local problems, well, we have students and we have people that can come up with those novel solutions that are local solutions. I want employers who are looking at places to set up their business to know that we have students who understand technology, who understand critical thinking, and who are pace setters and who are out there at the forefront. And this is a great place to also do business because we're graduating the kind of students every employer wants to hire. And we're also graduating the kind of students that every university and college should want to recruit. Our students are going to give us their visions for the future of 2059. What is yours? I'd have to say that my vision would be for TUSD to be the place that really transforms education from the inside out. Not so much about legislators and business people telling us, here's what you need to do to make education better. Rather, it's us, the students, the teachers, the administrators, the parents, the community, really transforming education and it beginning here in southern Arizona and blossoming throughout the rest of the state and the nation. Is there anything else you would like to communicate to the rest of TUSD? I think my big message is to watch, listen, and get ready to be amazed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's been great working with you, Dr. Sanchez, and we know that we will have some inspiring students taking our place in the next year. <clears throat> now we are going to transition to the open mic portion of our TV show. Um, please step forward and explain your vision of education in the year 2059. I'm going to start getting the ball rolling with my co-host, Sarah, over here. So what's your vision of TUSD in the year 2059? Well, my vision for the year of 2059 is just something like simple, like what happens if a, if a student is sick from school. Um, students could Skype into class and could actively participate in the class discussion either with like speaking and talking or online in chat rooms. Um, this way students cannot fall behind. <laughs> All right, please state your name and what your vision for the year 2059 is. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I think that in the year 2059, it would be great to see lots of technological advancements, maybe a book bookless school so that all our tech textbooks are on like iPads or tablets. And then I also think that um, it would be great to see more school spirit and excitement about outside school activities. Also, our school parking lot's a little crazy, so if by then somebody could create like a teleporter or something, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So can you tell me about your vision of the future? My name's Diana, and my vision of the future is having more variety of learning because not everybody learns in the same way. Some people learn by taking notes and reading them, some other by practicing them over and over again, some people simply by listening. So in the future, we will have more variety of learning if it's with pen and paper, with the screen and keyboard. Thank you. <laughs> All right, what about your vision for the year 2059? Hi, I'm Diamond Jackson. My vision is to see more schools improving and smaller classes. It's a good vision to have, thank you. <laughs> Can you tell me about your vision? Hi, I'm Matt, and my vision in the future, I think it will be more important than ever to produce well-rounded students with broad skill bases so they can, they can transition between the emerging markets that are gonna be rapidly exploding. Also, um, it should be a dynamic learning place because the future is prone to change and more than ever, it's a dynamic environment. Thank you so much. How do you feel about the year 2059? Hi, I'm Leslie from Rukan High School. We see TUSD's education as being more career oriented. So students will be taking classes that will correspond to what they wanna be in the future. Thank you. Can you tell me about your vision? Yes, my vision for the year 2059 is that um, learning is geared more towards um, also producing well-rounded students and geared more towards the changing technology because technology is becoming more and more prevalent in our everyday use because we use it for, if, if it's travel, we use our GPS on our phone, or if it's looking up information, we're using our phone. So if we could find a way to entice all of that into one and make it a lot easier. Thank you. Tell me about your vision. I'm Connor from Palo Verde High School, and my vision for the future of TUSD is really having enough funding for all the schools to have all the supplies we need, like updated textbooks, updated websites, and being able to get enough supplies throughout the school year. 
and also having reliable wireless networks. So wherever you are on campus or even sometimes off campus, you can access the resources you need to further your education. Thank you. Can you tell me your vision? Yeah, hi, I'm Dinah from Choya. And my vision for the future is that our classrooms will have a more futuristic look. Um, our classrooms will have this look that will make the students feel like home, like they, they want to come to school and learn. And I, I believe that our future is going to be it's very like the, the look wise, our classrooms are going to be like with laptops in every corner, our walls will have tablets that are going to make our students feel welcome and like wanting to learn, you know. Thank you. What do you see in the year 2059? Hi, I'm Rachel Juarez from University High School, and my vision for the year 2059 is that our schools are safer and cleaner. Nothing is more important than a safe and um, secure environment for our students. I agree, thank you. Can you tell me about your vision? Hi, I'm Ranta from Palo Verde High School, and my vision would be um, diversity. And now with the whole world becoming more international and global, um, we need to know about what's going on outside of the United States. And so the more diversity we have, the more we can learn about um, the foreign cultures, and uh, the more we can explore and uh, really learn about uh, ourselves and other people in the world. Thank you so much. What's your vision for the year 2059? What I expect to see in 2059 is more independence for the student to learn what they want to learn, not have a set thing that they have to learn, but more what they want to learn so then they can get the root basis of what they would like to do for the rest of their life. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. And last but not least, Karina, what is your vision of the future for TUSD? My vision for the future of TUSD, it'll be all technology based, like no more pen and paper. It'll be laptops, tablets, and computers. Thank you. I'd just like to thank you so much for joining us today and learning about TUSD and SAC. Um, we are going to have lunch together and hold elections for our officers for next year. If you'd like to participate, please contact your Learning Supports Cade coordinator or your counselor at your TUSD high school. Um, once again, thank you so much for watching.